Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video I wanted to talk about this relatively simple yet unusual star you're looking at right now. This is an object we actually very recently confirmed to be an extremely rare star, a star we actually didn't think existed. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this object that has a relatively long name but I'm going to refer to it simply as 2Mass J1808. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to what Man. So for the most part, this is actually a red dwarf, a star that's, well, very, very common in our uh, galaxy and shouldn't really be a surprise to scientists. The only thing is that it's not really just a typical red dwarf. All right, let me um, go back a little bit and tell you a little bit about a history of our universe, but specifically about how stars were made early on. So this is the Big Bang, the beginning of the universe. It actually is going to take about 200 million years for the first stars to appear. But it just so happens that those first stars are actually going to not live very long. We call them population three stars, or pop three for short. And with almost no exceptions, all of these stars will only live about a few thousand years or maybe maximum a million years and then go supernova. These stars were extremely massive, extremely bright, extremely powerful and were really, for the most part, made up of um, very early material. Hydrogen, helium, a little bit of lithium, a little bit of beryllium. Now, as soon as this star goes supernova though, it's going to leave behind a tremendously large amount of material that will then recycle and create new stars. But during the supernova, this is when a lot of other materials and other elements uh, from the periodic table will actually be produced. The so-called nucleosynthetic process here will produce the first 26 elements in the periodic table and pretty much everything else will be produced uh, with various other events such as, for example, a neutron star collision. But that's another story. So these 26 elements will be produced and um, will then result in the formation of other second generation stars known as population two stars. And population two stars will actually have a lot more non-hydrogen and non-helium in them. In other words, what we refer to as uh, metals, they're going to be a lot more metallic. Metals here don't mean iron, they just mean things that are not hydrogen and not helium. And these stars will then also go supernova and uh, actually there's still some of these left in the universe, we've even observed a few, but they'll go supernova and then result in, in the production of even more metallic um, elements. And this, in essence, will lead to the last uh, generation of stars known as population one stars. And guess what? Our sun is a population one star. It's very, very rich in metals. And this is why we have uh, non-hydrogen, non-helium terrestrial planets in our solar system. So in other words, all of this eventually leads to the production of terrestrial planets. But it just so happens that a relatively recent study discovered that even though we thought population three stars no longer existed, we may have just found one. And you may have just seen it right here. Now, what exactly is happening here? Well, let me tell you about the system. So here is a star known as 2 mass J1808-2002-510-4378. This is a relatively far away star, it's about 2,000 light years away from Earth. And um, we actually knew about the star, it's not very difficult to see it. Uh, it's uh, more bright than our sun, it's about five times as luminous, although in terms of temperature it's very similar to our sun. And um, we realized that this star is not very rich in metals. It's uh, what's known as an UMP or ultra metal poor star. But on the other hand, we also realized that it had a partner. And its partner, Odo Invisible, was actually an extremely old red dwarf that also was very, very poor in metals, even more so than the star right there. And this could only mean one thing. It meant that it was actually created about 13.5 billion years ago, pretty much right after the creation of the first stars in the universe. On the other hand, as of today, we don't really know how to explain the existence of this particular star. It actually doesn't really meet any of our um, current theories and we don't really know how it was made. We know for a fact that it's definitely old and it has very, very low metallicity. 
In other words, it seems to be a population 3 star, but unlike those uh, that I showed you previously that went supernova within about a million years, this one is a red dwarf, and so it literally survived for all of this time right here in our own galaxy. So in other words, this object right here contains the first ever hydrogen and helium created right after the Big Bang. Now, it would be actually interesting to find out if it's in any way different from various uh, materials that are present in our own solar system. But for the most part, what we understand about this object so far is that it most likely appeared about 200 million years after the Big Bang, and it's most likely one of the first stars in the universe, and maybe one of the few left kicking around. Now, it's because it's low in metallicity, it actually means that this system most likely does not have any terrestrial planets. Terrestrial objects, by definition, are metallic. They contain non-hydrogen, non-helium, things like silicates and things like iron. But these objects, these two stars, are very low in metallicity, suggesting that the only possible planets they may have would be uh, similar to Neptune or Uranus or even uh, much less prominent in that sense. They would be most likely uh, gas dwarfs containing nothing but hydrogen and helium. And so in terms of planetary discoveries, this is not a very interesting system, but in terms of the actual fact that this is maybe the oldest star in the universe, or at least in our galaxy, this is super interesting. But what's even more interesting is that we have no idea how to explain how the star was made. For the longest time, we tried to explain it by maybe trying to imagine a much larger system where we had other population 3 stars, and this star right here being created at the same time. And it just so happens that maybe, just maybe, this star just didn't get enough material. But that's just a speculation and there's really no way to actually explain it just yet. For the most part, I guess maybe what happened here was that once these stars went supernova and exploded, uh, this star just got kicked out of that particular region of space and moved closer to where it is now. But once again, we don't really know if this is how it happened. And also it has a partner, and so we don't really know how that came to be. So in that sense, this system is extremely mysterious and we can't really explain it right now using current understanding of the creation of the universe or the creation of the stars. Maybe in the next few years we'll be able to finally answer the question of this particular object and how it came to be, or maybe it will remain a mystery. Nevertheless though, it's absolutely fascinating that we were able to discover an object that was created pretty much right after the Big Bang, one of the first stars in the universe. On that note, I'm going to stop this here and hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something from it. If you did and if you still haven't subscribed, consider subscribing and maybe even share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and the universe. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.